Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Teach Them Well. And our scripture is Psalm 78. O my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying, for I will speak to you in a parable. I will teach you hidden lessons from our past, stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to the children, so the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. In an age when everything must have an immediate solution, there's little hope of a viral response to this text. Still, this text contains the ultimate solution to the madness that envelops the 21st century culture. To wit, if children are not taught well the lessons of how God's word is to be obeyed, we have no hope of having a sane, kind, and sustainable world. The psalmist said it clearly that if we forget God's sovereign power shown in his miracles and creation, complete generations of humans will cease to know God and will therefore set their hope on possessions and selfish ambitions. I cannot think of a better characterization of what's happening in our world. In my lifetime, I've watched the disappearing act in churches and the accompanying disregarding of fearing God in the sense of honoring He who created and sustains us, according to Colossians chapter 1. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation, for through Him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him. He existed before anything else, and He holds all creation together. Now, putting this all together, number one, God through Jesus the Christ created everything, including all humanity, and He keeps it going every second of every millennium and is therefore the owner of it all and us. Number two, He has given it all as a gift, sealed by the promise of His Spirit, the result of the blood of His Son Jesus shed on Calvary's tree. Three, that requires a response of respect and reverence for He who owns us, loves us, empowers us, and sets us free to live creative, constructive, kind, and loving lives. Number four, that shows up in many ways. But the first and foremost of that is worship. Number five, we are increasingly doing a pitiful job of that response. Number six, the way to reverse it is for families to return to a priority of worship, Bible study, and prayer so that the children in those families will learn how to really live. For you today, What I've shared is not new, nor is it flashy, it's not likely to make any headlines, and it's not a single app you can get on Google where you can hit the button and solve all the problems. Rather, it's a mindset, a worldview, a plain distillation of what Scripture covers from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, humankind's responsibility to worship God all the days we live and do whatever's necessary to pass along the faith to that next generation. Meet you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.